fine so good evening everyone this is dr munjal as you know there are a few other doctors who are also joining first time so let me little quickly introduce the things right medical mcq for all is a prometric company providing coaching for all dha had moh all qatar and uh, oman kuwait bahrain and all exams basically this is our main key i mean expertise we provide prometric 1000 mcq book as well as ebook we have online subscriptions we have whatsapp subscription we have exclusive we are the only company globally who does the coaching for oman viva we have all data flow services we have short sort or money back guarantee package mobile application and dedicated mock test on the website so so these are the exclusive things what we are offering and this is one of the best now so you can utilize it all under one roof as i told you i am myself is dr munjal i am founder and ceo plus i am a hemat oncologist and bone marrow transplant fellow practicing almost for more than 20 years now and who worked in various parts of the world including middle east so uh, this is what the academic uh, background and i treated more than 1000 100000 patients so far i deliver how thousands of chemotherapies and i have a fair good clinical coaching experience of more than 10 years and we have excellent teams as well along with me dr arthi is a consultant pediatrician who is taking all pediatric classes dr madi is a very popular amongst the coach as well she is excellent internal medicine guy dr ankit is gastroenterologist dr shikha and dr dipali is a consultant gynecologist and lot more teams on the back end this is our contact detail as i told you this is our hard copy book recently published we have lots of coaching offers from 50 to 70% discount you can inquire later on data flow services as i told you dr anjali based at dubai she is completely dealing with the data flow so you can approach her for exam booking license transfer everything she will does from dubai all day based at dubai so direct ua number so you can approach her for any help and last but not this recently we i mean added excellent mock test on our website on the website as well as in the different mock test module so you can must and one thing i want to comment before starting our main core subject very few people are doing this i strongly recommend you do maximum mock test there would be a tremendous increase the chance of passing the exam because until until and unless you do the mock test you will not do the self assessment oh, where are you standing where are you standing what's the problem how much score you are getting you will definitely not know right so you need to know the complete score before going to the exam so try to do the maximum number of mock tests try to evaluate yourself try to understand where you are doing the mistake right and try to work on it if you feel any help need any help for the being expert feel free to call me my number is this this is my direct mobile number as well as whatsapp number so you can approach me on this numbers as well or to my any team so let's start with our main things we have as i told you lot of discounted things not going in detail you can inquire later on last but not least strongly recommend whatever i am speaking today like that there are hundreds of videos available on our youtube channel medical mcq for all it's a free access to everyone whether you are joining not joining so try to utilize and try to get the advantage of this excellent high yield videos from our experts right so let's start with the our questions right so first questions in front of your screen this is the question right try to understand the questions try i'll guide you and give you the trick and tips right so which is the most confirmatory test for acute myeloid leukemia or blood cancer arrow shows all rods in the blast so here the picture is given in the exam right this is the picture here the all rod this is all all rod so basically all rod to be more simplified picture this is a cytoplasm right this could be a nucleus and nucleolus and there is a rod like structure in the cytoplasm this is all rod just a little simpler picture for you guys right so this is all rod right so all rod in the cytoplasm so what they are asking which is the most confirmatory test for acute myeloid leukemia arrow shows or rod in the blast so this is a blast cell right this is a blast cell in blast cell there is a or rod in the cytoplasm so there are 
four things bone marrow examination flow cytometry or immunophenotyping cytogenetic or pcr polymerase chain reaction so what's your answer think over it we will discuss each and everything in detail with a complete crystal clear clarity so try to try to understand probably this questions may be repeated for few people but it's again very much learning right so yes dr javed so now let's discuss this is open platform anybody can ask any questions anybody can comment anything being an expert panelist i will guide you the correct things right so don't hesitate to ask any questions right every question is good question so don't shy don't hesitate that what other people thinks nobody will think nothing you just ask your queries right yes dr javed kureshi what do you think why you selected the cytogenetic or chromosomal analysis as a most confirmatory test i now type it on mistake uh, actually it has to be only the flow cytometry and okay, uh, flow is... cytometry yes sir fine fair enough now i am just trying to understand yes dr yes, mauli so 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 what do you think why this is a flow cytometry or immunophenotyping is a confirmatory test dr mauli yeah you can speak up no problem yes can you able to speak dr mauli why do you think that flow cytometry or why the flow cytometry is better than bone marrow examination or cytogenetic or pcr our job just is not to know the answer our job is to exclude other answers as well dr ravi any comment no no uh flow cytometry uh, detects yes. the protein uh, that present on the surface of the lithiumic cell okay wonderful is what is the, the name of that protein yeah sorry what is the name of that protein or what we call medically is there any uh, term for that yes there is uh, if you remember it's okay well and good don't worry but ju just try to understand and learn the things you will that you will may, learn uh, end up a acute yes. uh, AML, or I think protein one or core binding protein, something like that. I'm not sure right now. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So now let me go step by step each and everything in detail, right? Because they may ask this question. They may ask different questions as well, right? But we need to know all the answers, right? So say, for example, leukemia. So tell me, Doctor Mauli, what is the definition of leukemia or acute leukemia? If I want to tell anything as acute leukemia, what is the basic definition? How you tell that? Okay, fine. This is acute leukemia. Which patients you can label as acute leukemia? Is there any definition of acute leukemia? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear yeah, you very okay. well. Sorry, I am outside of home. That's why. Okay, so uh, no leukemia is a uh, that is a malignant uh, disease which is progressive in nature uh, uh, from bone marrow and other blood forming organs that produce a number of immature or abnormal leukocytes. It can affect the okay. white blood cell. Okay, yeah. immature, immature white blood, cell white blood cell leukocyte. Right. So, is that le acute leukemia is in terms of speed development of speed of leukemia or some kind of numbers so it is a qualitative or quantitative or how you say that okay sir this is acute leukemia this is chronic leukemia so is there any any difference between acute leukemia and chronic leukemia anybody wants to comment on this acute versus chronic leukemia these are absolutely basic uh, most many things but we don't know the concept so i'll teach you the concept you can answer any question in hematology yes so how you generally differentiate between acute leukemia Nirja, you can speak also, no problem, if you are in the class. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, acute leukemia, if the blast percent is more than 20%, we will consider as a acute leukemia, sir. Wonderful. So, one definition comes up Hello. is that more than 20% of the blast, right, in bone marrow or blood, peripheral blood, both the way. We will see the literature mm. as well, right, a authentic mm. literature from the international guideline. We will see everything today. So, peripheral blood or bone marrow, right? Here, usually less mm -hmm. than 10% blast, usually. Fine. So, this is one, right, in terms of percentage of blast. This is the only difference. 
or any more additional points in acute versus chronic because i tell you 10 points this is one of the mm -hmm. one point so now tell me second third fourth fifth six seven eight nine ten points this is only one point yes sir. tell me anyone open for all anyone those who wants to comment on acute versus chronic leukemia they can comment it's important you need to know being a clinician right how you differentiate acute versus chronic and in exam this something will come up anybody wants to make any comment dr ravi dr binish any anybody dr dr gupta any any comments you want to make on this dr glory dr grace dr priya uh, it's common in acute leukemia common in age sorry common in what common in age whereas in chronic leukemia seen in elderly fair enough let's see fine dr shaika dr rishana any comment on this if the same question comes in exam how you gonna differentiate this patient right so let me tell you head by head comparison of acute versus chronic leukemia very important if you don't understand anything i would be glad to answer you so don't hesitate to ask the questions acute leukemia the name itself suggests the name itself suggests acute something fast right chronic something slow right so this is major difference in terms of speed so if, if how how fast they develop so usually acute leukemia progress fast let me give you the example the cbc before 3 months was normal and within 3 months patient present with the pancytopenia fever bleeding recurrent infection blah blah very fast progress within 2 3 months patient develop leukemia and he die as well within 3 months while chronic leukemia they are from months to years months to years this is in months to years i can say this is days to weeks <laughs> days to weeks or few months it is never years acute leukemia is never in years maximum it is in the month three months four months like that so when you see the history of the patient fever short time bleeding short time recurrent infection short time right so something very progress this is in terms of history this is how how we get to know by the history if you ask the patient before how many months you were absolutely fine then patient say sir before two months i was everything fine i was going to farm i was going to job business nothing was there within two months something developed this is little acute patient was saying 12 months before i have hemoglobin low then as you gradually it is falling from 12 then 11 and then 10 9 this is little chronic 12 months absolutely slow history patient usually present severely ill patient right there are three component in cbc let me tell you remind you one is hemoglobin so hemoglobin is less patient may present with the anemia symptoms of fatigue easy fatigability low wbc count recurrent infection because of immature wbc they are not working well neutrophil doesn't make his functions very well so recurrent infections pneumonia uti gi infection low platelet count patient may present with the gum bleeding urine bleeding excessive menses right patchy ecchymosis this is blah blah right so this is classical presentation of pancytopenia or bone marrow failure right so they usually they are very sick they are very sick while these patients are mostly asymptomatic mostly asymptomatic chronic either cml chronic myeloid leukemia or chronic lymphoid leukemia acute there are two entity acute myeloid leukemia acute lymphoid leukemia we'll see in detail little bit chronic myeloid there are two so four major subtype aml all cml 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 cll sorry right so this is progressive this is not very progressive it is a slowly this is severely ill this is almost asymptomatic so if i can tell you 50000 wbc count total count of 50000 and neutrophil is 70% patient is asymptomatic can anyone tell me what's the diagnosis three informations with you patient wbc count is 50000 neutrophil is 7 let me tell you neutrophil is 80000 oh 80% sorry patient is asymptomatic what could be the diagnosis four option aml all cml cln four option what's the diagnosis anyone any comment make comment no problem right or wrong nirja any comment chronic leukemia yes so ravi is saying chronic leukemia yes so that one thing is confirmed that it is chronic leukemia but if i want to tell you in chronic leukemia what's the difference chronic leukemia could be cml or cll 
So what is the difference in CML? Here is a leukocytosis, here also leukocytosis. But difference is CML, neutrophilic leukocytosis. In CML, lymphocytic leukocytosis. So when there is a high count, first step, what is how I being a clinical oncologist or medical hematologist, I see, I see the WBC. WBC is high. It could be high in CML as well as in CLL. What my next step? Neutrophilis increase or lymphocyte? If neutrophilis, more likely CML. Lymphocyte increase, more likely CLL. Is that clear, Ravi? Is that clear? Yes or no? Tell me. So far, is that clear or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, this acute leukemia, chronic leukemia. So, severely ill can be asymptomatic or whatever I am seeing, 10 out of, I mean, 9 out of 10 are usually asymptomatic or mild symptoms, minimal symptoms, asymptomatic or minimal symptoms. Fields without complication, complications can arise uh, common in a younger age group. So, this is again important. Acute leukemia usually, so acute lymphoblastic leukemia, commonest hematological malignancy in a children or pediatric age group, right? So, it's in younger age. AML is also in a children as well as in a young adult usually. While chronic, like chronic myeloid leukemia, adult more than 50 or CLL usually more than 60 to 70 as per the book. And I'm seeing hundreds of patients annually with this age group only. So this is elderly, right? Need immediate treatment, immediate treatment because bone marrow is failed, pancytopenia, bone marrow is pancytopenia, bone marrow is in failure. If you don't treat, this blast 20% goes 30%, 40%, patient may die, right? either because of two major leading cause of death in acute leukemia, right? So, low hemoglobin, they will not die. Even 5-HB, patient will not die, right? But low WBC carries increased significant risk of infection. So, either he die because of pneumonia, DIC, ARDS, he will die. Major intracranial bleeding or massive peritoneal hemorrhage or massive bleeding, he will die, right? So, these are the two common cause of death in leukemia. One is infection, another is bleeding. Important to know. And that is why they need immediate treatment. Here, usually, total count is high. Hemoglobin is probably normal or low, or platelet count is usually normal. So, they will neither die because of these things, right? So, this, this treatment can be delayed. And is a, in asymptomatic patients, CLL, CLL asymptomatic patient, otherwise fine, I will just monitor every three monthly, CBC and lymphocyte count. That's it. Until and unless you develop lymphadenopathy, organomegaly, splenomegaly, or thrombocytopenia or anemia as per the right classification, I will not going to treat this patient. So, it just monitored. That's it. Right? So, treatment. Prognosis is predictable. Prognosis is rather, I can say, good or curable. Cure. Here, prognosis, this is usually non-curable. So, CML, you cannot cure. CML, no cure. CLL, no cure. Only curative option for chronic leukemia in this world is a bone marrow transplant. Only one treatment, bone marrow transplant. While AML and ALL both can be treated with chemotherapy, right? And those who fail chemotherapy, you can go for the bone marrow transplant. But with this chemotherapy, you can treat this patient, right? And uh, that's it. So, this is more or less by and large this clinical uh, how they present and how you differentiate in terms of number right acute leukemia more than 20 percent of the blast in peripheral or bone marrow right so this is one of the main who criteria for telling acute myeloid leukemia so when you are suspecting any patients as a leukemia you do a bone marrow i have an excellent bone marrow video on the youtube so you can go and read it listen it i had given complete a to z all step how to do from skin to complete procedure of 10 minutes, how to do, what to do, what tech care needs to be taken, it's there on YouTube, right, bone marrow biopsy by Dr. Munjal, so if you are interested, you can go and see it, anyway, so any questions related with this, right, so acute leukemia, the definition of acute leukemia is more than 20% of the blast cell in blast, right, and now if it is a myeloblast, it is acute myeloid leukemia, if it is a lymphoid blast, it is acute lymphoid leukemia. That's it. Here 20% blast. Here also 20% blast. So that won't change. Only change which lineage involved. If mileage lineage involved, AML. If lymphoid lineage involved, ALL. That's it. Any questions, any query so far? Yes or no? Anyone, yes, please. Any question? Fine. So if you have no questions, I'll go further. Right?
so first of all right so whenever again i am coming to that point if you are suspecting acute leukemia to any patients there are four questions in the exam four questions write down or remember or see the video later on with youtube what is the initial test answer will be change what is the diagnostic test answer will be change what is a confirmatory test answer will be change and what is the prognostic test answer will be change so how do you know what is the so any patient acute leukemia comes to you dr mauli what is the first test what is the initial test what is the first test you send to the laboratory or to your lab that okay you do this this could be leukemia let's see it so what test you will send what test you order here i had posted here the most confirmatory test most confirmatory test so this is most confirmatory i ask this but if i ask you what is the initial test right then answer will be changed what is the diagnostic test answer will be changed what is the prognostic test answer will be changed now tell me so in one question there are four answers yes mauli any comment no sir please Sorry? tell us no sir i can tell the initial one but i think confirmatory is maybe bone marrow or slow cytometry that i know right so so basically so so see do you think without cbc and peripheral you ask for the bone marrow do you do the bone marrow without doing the cbc or peripheral smear no so whenever any acute leukemia patient first and foremost is cbc and peripheral smear right cbc what will you give the idea about hemoglobin white cell platelet that is number 1 right and if you have pancytopenia you understand that okay it could be something wrong in the bone marrow and peripheral smear you see the blast cell either in the bone marrow or blood if you see the blast cell if you see the or rod right and let me tell you one thing aml is equal to or rod a u e r what is or rod this is or rod this is or rod so or rod is nothing or rod is seen in another question or rod is seen in which condition aml all cml cll four question or rod is equal to aml no ll no cml no cll or rod is equal to aml that's it this is clear cut concept right so or rod is aml so when you do the peripheral smear and you should the or rod in a peripheral smear aml is confirmed that is for sure 100% so cbc and peripheral smear is the best initial test if they ask you in the exam initial test you don't need to do the bone marrow right initial test for chest pain what is the chest pain if some patient comes to you or your emergency right with the chest pain what test you will do tell me x ray ecg 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 or ecg chest pain yeah ecg chest chest pain usually we don't want to miss acute mi so ecg right once you confirm that okay it looks like a stemi right it looks then you send the enzyme trop t trop i ckmb blah blah then you go for the angiography or coronary angiography so initial test in chest pain is ecg best confirmatory test is coronary angiogram best test in leukemia initial is cbc you don't directly jump to the bone marrow or flow cytometry isn't it yes or no did you get my point yes or no yes sir right yes sir so first and here you took the history quick physical examination also do right what is the history family history hypertension smoking obesity dyslipidemia diabetes past history of ihd blah 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 right what well, that is what we do for years and years in our opd and emergency so you quick do the ec uh, history you suspect you do ecg if ecg is positive you go for the enzyme and within 30 minutes or 1 hour you take a decision to take into the coronary angiography and probably you do the primary angioplasty if there is a block isn't it this is how we do this is what the, they ask in the exam so initial test is a bone uh, this cbc and peripheral smear dr mauli you getting me yeah are you getting yes me? sir yes sir second thing once you suspected then what's the next step is a bone marrow you want to now diagnose you suspected on the cbc and peripheral initial test you suspected that okay fine this is likely leukemia now how to confirm leukemia or how you diagnose leukemia then first test is initially cbc peripheral smear then you go for the bone marrow bone marrow biopsy you what you are going to see in the bone marrow num number 1 one is a morphology 
what type of cell seen in the microscope, right? This is seen in the microscope, na? like peripheral smear. You are doing the peripheral smear of the bone marrow because you are collecting from the bone marrow, right? And you are collecting from the blood. It's a peripheral blood smear, peripheral blood film. I can say bone marrow smear, right? So that is bone marrow smear or that can be done by bone marrow examination. So I'll see what kind of blast is seen, whether myeloblast, myeloblast, or you can see lymphoblast, say for example, right? Depends on that, you say that is okay, sir. This is likely acute myeloid leukemia because I have seen one, this many cells with lots of or rods in the plasma, right? So this is likely AML, right? Or rod is equal to AML. Never ever miss this part. If you remember all trips and tricks, your life is easy. So or rod is equal to AML. Whatever people confuse you, or rod, means AML. No other diagnosis. Or rod, AML. That's it. Is that clear? It's a pathognomonic. I can say when you see the this pathognomonic. Right? So one is you see the morphology. Number one. Second thing what you see number of the blast. Right? You can count. So you can count 100 cell. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 100 cell. So out of 100 cell, 30 blast and 70 normal. Means 30% blast is what? Acute leukemia. You How much you need? More than 20%. You have 30%. It's acute leukemia. Now, first you confirm whether there is the acute leukemia. Once you confirm acute leukemia, you confirm by morphology myeloid or lymphoid. Is that clear? Yes or no? Tell me at least yes or no. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So, your job is done. So, you come to conclusion after CBC and peripheral smear, right, on the bone marrow examination. Sir, it is likely acute myeloid leukemia I have seen. Now, in acute myeloid leukemia, let me tell you there are seven subtype, rather total eight, but M0 is there. So, M0 to M7 subtype as per the FAB, French, American, British classification, yes. right? Do you know that? Yes or no? At least tell me yes or no. Yes, sir. Yes. yes sir. So, this M0 to M7, how did you get to know? If you can, mm -hmm. and or rod is not seen in all leukemia, not all AML. This is or rod is seen in 20 to 30 percent of the patient, means 70 percent. They have not, there is no or rod. Then how do you know? No. Sometimes, say for example, this is a, this is a myeloblast, say for example. And this is a lymphoblast. Cytoplasm. But sometimes it is very difficult. Sometimes it is very difficult to find under microscope. Then how did you get to know? That is what the Dr. Mauli was trying to understand. So there is on the surface of blast cell, there is a marker called as a CD marker. CD marker. CD marker. Dr. Mowley, did you remember yeah. now? CD marker. Yeah, yeah, CD marker. Have you, uh, that is the full form of CD is cluster differentiation. Different. So there is a CD34, CD20, CD134. Isn't it? Yeah. Did, yes. you, did you read somewhere such kind of things? Yeah, yeah, yes sir. or no? Right? Mm. So these are the CD marker. And this CD marker cannot be seen on this morphology. You cannot see that, right? For that, you need a confirmatory test. So, third thing comes in picture. For CBC peripheral, you suspected. You did a bone diagnosis. Now, you want to confirm 100%. AMR, that is first flow of cytometry. All, that is flow cytometry and that is the answer. So, here, most confirmatory test is flow cytometry. Flow cytometry. But I am trying to un make you understand. So, any questions they ask you in the exam for AML, AML, CLL, CML, whatever, you can answer all questions, right? That is why I'm going bit in basic. It's important. So now we have something which can say, okay, fine. This is CD34. This is myeloid marker. This is CD20 lymphoid marker. In CD20, anti-CD20, there is a one drug called as a rituximab. Someone has mm -hmm. heard the name, right? Rituximab, yeah. anti-CD20. We use in CLL, we use in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and many lymphoproliferative disorders. We'll see in the onco lecture, not now. We are doing hematology. So I'm not going much in CD20. It's an interesting subject. We'll cover later on. Anyway, so this is the confirmatory test. And once you diagnose, you confirm it, right? Dr. Bowley, is that clear yeah. to you now, right? Yes, sir. So this this will this will never, this, this marker will 100% identify whether it is a myeloid origin or whether it is a lymphoid. You don't need to mug up which are the marker in myeloid and lymphoid. If you know, it's well and good. If you don't know, it's fine. It's none of your job. It's a job of histo hematopathologist. Hematopathologist. It's not job. Even I don't know each and every marker, right? I'm a clinician. I send the bone marrow. I did bone marrow. I send it to laboratory. I told that you do the flow cytometry, immunobinotyping. The report will come up with that. Okay, sir, this is acute myeloid leukemia. M2 subtype, FAB, M0 to M7. 
M2. So this is final diagnosis. This is, so the two things I get the idea. I confirm the diagnosis AML. Also, I confirm the subtype as well because there are seven subtypes, M0 to M7. I told you already, right? So yeah. that you also need to know because everybody has a different prognosis. If I can tell you M0 prognosis is what, M3 prognosis is what, and M7 prognosis is what. Every so stage is a different CD marker. Yes, yes, right? So I'll come on that point as well, don't worry. So, so this is what the thing is, right? So once you confirm, and now you want to know the prognosis. Fourth question, right? What is the prognostic test? So there are four questions. Initial CBC peripherals mere diagnostic bone marrow examination, confirmatory, uh, this flow cytometry or immunophenotyping or prognostic test is a cytogenetic, cytogenetic. Have you heard of this word? Cytogenetic or yeah. chromosomal analysis, chromosomal analysis. Yeah. So chromosomal analysis or cytogenetic is a prognostic test. How it's prognostic test? Let me tell you little one more minute just to give you the more clarity what is a prognostic test right so prognostic test is something which decide right how the disease will behave down the line right how the disease will behave so say for example very interesting story about these things so say for example aml we'll take aml right so prognostic test is a cytogenetic or flows uh, sorry or chromosomal analysis both are the same thing Cyto means cell and genetic means cell. So what is the cell of the genetic? Nucleus, right? Yeah. Right? So in nucleus, right? When you treat it, right? So you, you get eventually, when you process it, right? There are 23 pairs of the chromosome. Do you know that? Yes or no? Yeah. This is yes. one and this is 23rd. Just I'm trying to go in quickly. So this is called as a sex chromosome. Yeah. In female, it is XX. In male, it is XY. It That's XY. it. Yeah. Right? So, this is normal. This is normal. So, mm. depends on some chromosomal changes, chromosomal mutation, right? Translocation, mutation. They have categorized this in a three category. What three category? Good risk, intermediate risk, high risk. You don't need to mug up. I mean, all gene and all genetic. Just trying to make you understand so so say why why you want to do the prognosis why you want to categorize sir whatever is there we need to give the chemotherapy yes you are right but see the prognosis see next 30 second what uh, what the change in the prognosis good risk treatment is induction chemotherapy followed by usually three to four consolidation therapy good risk how the treatment change inter mid, intermediate risk induction chemotherapy right if the patient Right, either two options: autologous stem cell transplant, autologous, right, or four cycle of chemo. And high risk induction chemotherapy directly followed by allogenic bone marrow transplant. Is that clear? Yes or no? Induction treatment is same for every irrespective of risk factor of leukemia. Induction chemotherapy will same. Usually there is a seven plus three. Those you are worked in leukemia center. 7 plus 3 means 7 days of cytarabine. This is the name of the drug. Cytarabine and 3 days of downorubicin. 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 We give as an induction chemotherapy. Right? And uh, we'll see 21 days we do a bone marrow whether it is remission or not. Before diagnosis there are 30% blast cell. After 21 days it is a less than 5%. We will call that bone marrow in remission. Means there is a no leukemia. Patient has a good clinical response. Are you getting me? Tell me yes or no. At least yeah. yes or no. Right? So, so induction chemotherapy, oh sorry, good risk, only chemotherapy is good enough. Induction followed by consolidation, absolute chemo. Here chemo, right, induction chemo followed by transplant, autologous and here allogenic. What is the difference between autologous? Right? If A patient, right, right, A and B, yeah. right, so if patient is A and donor is also A, means own stem cell using autologous, right? If B person different is giving person stem cell to A, it is a different person, allogenic. That's it. Yeah. Right? So if we are using our own stem cell, it's autologous transplant. If we are using from our brother, sister, blah, blah, it's a allogenic bone marrow transplant. Let's come to the prognosis. If you do the treatment properly here, five-year survival, five-year survival, Means patient diagnosed in 2024 with the intermediate uh, good risk AML 
completely finish the treatment almost i can say 70% patient live up to 5 years intermediate risk if i do the treatment 50% will live 5 years and high risk patient right even if i do the treatment they are living only 20% what does it mean? Means 80%, 20% 5 years survival. We call it the 5 year survival. Right? Or they are live after 5 years. So 20, 29, how many patients will die? Right? Survive. 70% means within 5 years they die. 30%. Here 50% will die. Here 80% will die. Is that clear? Yes or no? At least tell yeah. me yes or no. Yes, so this is, so now you can see the huge difference between this prognosis this and this right so that is why you need to know what risk category is this and this apply to all aml aml cml cls whatever blah blah right so we'll sometime cover in detail but this is little less time for us we have limited time so i'm just trying to make you brief understanding of concept right so this genetic will pro decide the prognosis right it is not number of blast not number of the blast if somebody has 30 percent blast 40 percent of the blast it doesn't matter Treatment will be same, mm -hmm. but if there, if thirty, if forty percent blast, right, with good risk is better than thirty percent with high risk. So, got my point? Mm -hmm. Okay, you so prognosis will be better in uh, good risk, other yeah. than the high risk. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Right. So there is a there is a there is a genetic chart is there. So I will share sometime the chart with you. But just for your understanding, so, so we are quality, all clinicians. Qualitative is matter here, not quantitative. Yes, quality is matter, de definitely. So, mm -hmm. cytogenetics. So, now concluding my first answer yeah. or complete questions, we we covered almost 100 of things in one questions, right? So, right, initially is CBC peripheral smear, diagnostic is bone marrow, flow cytometry is a confirmatory and cytogenetic or 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 uh, this uh, chromosomal analysis is a prognostic. Is that clear now? So if yes, anyone can ask true. you, right, this pattern will be same for all leukemia in general, right? So what are the questions here we covered? So we briefly covered acute leukemia definition more than 20% plus. We covered mm -hmm. almost 10, 20 question in one questions, right? They can ask you in a different, different way. I try to explain you all. Difference between acute and leukemia. We have seen the chart. Best prognostic amongst all leukemia. So let me tell you, AML, M0, M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, M7. Lots of questions here. Which is the most commonest, most commonest among all leukemia? One question, like four questions in there, right? Initial, diagnostic, confirmatory and prognostic. Options are same. All options are same. Commonest one is which? Which has the best prognosis? Best prognosis. Which has the worst prognosis? Which has the highest cure rate? What is the drug of choice for AML M3? Anyone wants to try all the question in one question? The Sorry? CML is the common. No, no, common we are not talking M3. about CML. We are talking M3. about AML, sir, only. In AML, there are M0 to M7 subtype. Now, my question is, amongst M0 to M7, which one is commonest? That is the one question. So, let me M3. ask you. Tell you M2, the sir. Answer is M2. Almost 20 to 30% of the patient, they present with M2. So, this answer is done. Based prognosis, M3. M3. Based prognosis, M3. The name of the M3 is APL. Or another name is APML. Right? Acute promyelocytic leukemia or acute promyelocytic leukemia. It is APML or AML. Based how much? In terms of percentage, 70 to 80 percent of the patient, if they complete the treatment as per the protocol, 80% up to 80% of the leukemia or blood cancer is cured forever. Believe me. You are just listening this sentence. I am treating for 20 years. So I have a strong belief it is absolutely curable. If they are detected on time, if you start the treatment as soon as possible, absolutely curable. Can you imagine? 
ब्लड कैंसर इज क्यूरेबल यस इट इज गो एंड रीड इट लिटरेचर दिस इज एब्सोलूटली यू कैन टेक पिक्चर ऑल पिक्चर ऑल द डेटा एब्सोलूटली एज इट इज एज पर द बुक एंड माई ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस सो आई एम गोइंग ऑल द थ्रू दिस द बुक राइट सो मोस्ट बेस्ट प्रोग्नोसिस इज एन थ्री राइट हाइएस्ट क्योर रेट हाइएस्ट क्योर रेट इज अगेन आंसर थर्ड इज ए पी एल और एक्यूट प्रो माइलोसिटिक ल्यूकेमिया राइट एक्यूट प्रो माइलोसिटिक ल्यूकेमिया राइट बेस्ट प्रोग्नोसिस इज एक्यूट माइलोड ल्यूकेमिया बेस्ट प्रोग्नोसिस इज एक्यूट माइलोड ए पी एल एम थ्री राइट हाइएस्ट क्योर रेट इज ऑल्सो देर राइट ए पी एल एम थ्री राइट एंड बेस्ट बेस्ट प्रोग्नोसिस इज ऑल्सो देर एनी वन नो वट इज दर्स प्रोग्नोसिस एम जीरो टू एम सेवन एम जीरो no that is your homework i'm not telling you the answer you just go and read it otherwise you won't going to read it right so your homework amongst m0 to m7 if the comes in the exam the gentleman coming with this blah 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 diagnosed exact myeloid leukemia which leukemia has a worse prognosis m0 to m7 are the option you m3 is the prognosis sir m3 is the best i am talking about worst क्वेश्चन रिस्क ग्रुप राइट बोन मैरो ट्रांसप्लांट और कीमोथेरापी सो वन इज कीमोथेरापी और वन इज इफ द कीमोथेरापी डजेंट वर्क और हाई रिस्क यू गो फॉर द इंडक्शन एंड देन डू बोन मैरो ट्रांसप्लांट राइट बट ए एम एल एम थ्री देर इज वन ड्रग एनीबडी नोस द नेम ऑफ द ड्रग विच कैन बी एडेड ऑन टॉप ऑफ द कीमोथेरापी वन ड्रग टारगेटेड ड्रग ड्रग नेम no not arsenic trioxide is a chemotherapy i'm talking mm-hmm. about targeted therapy which specifically used in aml m3 or acute pluralist myelocytic leukemia somebody told etra etra, etra is a all trans retinoic acid Retinoic it's a vitamin a derivatives vitamin a derivative that change the prognosis right this drug acts on the which onco gene anybody knows there is a one name of the onco gene 15 sir mm mm-hmm. so there is a there is a translocation of 1517 right 17 yes sir right mm-hmm. but there is a oncogene what is the name of oncogene pml rar alpha ha ah, pml rara pml rara is that clear mm-hmm. yes or no yes like sir. if i can tell you cml chromosomal mm-hmm. abnormalities everyone knows 922 to translocation isn't it yes or no and mm, yes, oncogene sir. is bcrable mm-hmm. yes or no Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So here, here the translocation is fifteen seventeen. Oncogene is this, this, and here the third thing is if you block this gene, you can hold the APL progression. And the drug is Atra. Here the drug which blocks the CML or uh, BCR able is imatinib. Same, okay. same. No need to mug up. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Doctor Mauli, is that clear? Going well to you? Yeah. wonderful wonderful i think i got a brilliant audience so i'm enjoying wonderful any questions related with this before i jump to the things any questions in your mind don't think it yes, is sir. silly questions what are the people think ask full pledge yes sir sir i yes, have please. a doubt for treatment treatment aspect for n5 which treatment usually advises sir in the induction chemotherapy followed by consolidation chemotherapy Mm. M5 okay. is acute myelomonocytic leukemia. Mm, yes, sir. Yes. Except so, M3, in, all in the treatments. Same. Treatment like uh, in case of APML, there is Atra, sir. For yes, M5, there is specific treatment for M5. 
M5 is M5. There is no at run because there is no translocation 15, 17. Okay. There is no PML, RAR, alpha. So you just give the chemotherapy. Okay, sir. Same mm. as M0, M1, M2, M4, M5, same treatment. Okay, sir. Mm. Is that clear? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Wonderful. Anyone and have any questions, Dr. Mauli, Dr. Grace, Dr. Javed, Likon, Madanlal Gupta, Manjit Singh, Priya Sriju, Ravi, Shikat. We all are in the class. Any questions with this? Something bothering you, but you cannot able to clear with your resident, your consultant related leukemia. Yes or no? Fine. So mm -hmm. I think you all are clear. So I'm not going much in detail. So this is a very nice picture for you guys for the basic understanding. This is how it evolves. So if you understand this flow, you can answer any questions of leukemia. So first cell is a stem cell and this is stem cell. This is hematopoietic means blood forming stem cell. So this is hematopoietic stem cell. Hematopoietic stem cell in book you can see this word HSC, hematopoietic stem cell, right? Now if you forget this just to make it more easy, directly come to this lymphoblast, myeloblast just to make it little easy, right? So let me draw here. Here the hematopoietic stem cell, which is this one, it gives rise to two cell, lymphoblast and myeloblast. It is easy to remember, lymphoblast will give you the two cell only. There are two cell, B lymphocyte, B lymphocyte, T lymphocyte. Rest of all is myeloblast. So B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte. So, it will give you the rise to three series, red blood cell, white blood cell and platelet. All This is all myeloid. In red blood cell, right, so RBC will produce from myeloblast. WBC except lymphoblast, lymphocyte is here. So, what are the differential? Neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil and monocyte. No lymphocyte because it is produced from lymphoblast and platelet count. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 things develop. See here, the same picture. T lymphocyte and B lymphocyte from lymphoblast. Right? And myeloblast will give you, this is RBC. This is platelet. And this all four is a WBC. I already mentioned. Neutro, eosino, baso and mono. Neutro, eosino, baso and mono. Is that clear to you? Yes or no? Yes or no? At least tell me yes or no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now see when the when something wrong in the stem cell, if it is excessively producing lymphoblast, 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 it is acute lymphoid leukemia when there is a more than twenty percent of the blast. Is that clear? All lymphocyte is producing, right? And when there is a more only myelocyte is producing. 10, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, 30%, right? And you confirm with the flow that it is acute myeloid, then this is AML. Why? Because there is a myeloblast. It is AML. Why ALL? Because it is a lymphoblast. No need to mug up. Simple. Remember this chart. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Dr. Nirja, is it clear to you now? Oh, yes, sir. It's clear. Wonderful. So, no need to mug up. No need to mug up. Remember this picture. This is a basic picture we seen from physiology from first year MBBS. You open up the blood chapter. This picture is there. Right? How how they evolve. Right? So, so I will come to this chart later on. Let me jump to the next question so you better understand. Right, so this is all clear regarding the AML. So I'm not going in much detail. Whatever I explained you, initial diagnostic confirmatory it is in the uh, readable form. So I already explained you, right? So right. let me go to the next questions, which is very high yield again for you guys. Right, so yes, little related with first. So you now your job is little easy now. Next question, because now you get little clarity, right? 15-year-old girl was admitted with anemia, chest infection, thrombocytopenia. She was treated 
for the same and her symptoms has regressed she was brought again with the fever same symptoms like fever then bleeding and then uh, this weakness and all she has same symptoms few days later she also seems to have features of meningitis probably headache nerve stiffness vomiting likely meningitis what is the most likely diagnosis is aml all aplastic anemia cll or cml fifth option is cml cll also i put it from my side so what could be the diagnosis? Think it's over ALL, it. So. ALL. ALL. Think over it. ALL. So how many are saying ALL? And what's the reason? I want to know, right? Mm -hmm. I want to know why ALL. What point favors in ALL? It's an age girl. Sorry? The age, the age of the girl is an age sir. Right. Girl. So, so ALL, mm -hmm. right? Yes, we sir. will see I'm all all four. Minutes. We'll see AML. We see ALL. There ALL. are five options. A, a plastic anemia, double A, and CML. Mm -hmm. There are four options. Na? So we need to exclude as well. Our job being mm -hmm. a clinician is not just to diagnose the things. We need to exclude the other things as well, right? So yes, first sir. of all, the answer is ALL. So point favors. Mm -hmm. Point favors. This is how you have to do in exam. Everyone, mm -hmm. those who are listening to me, you need to do some practice in for you. So point favors for you, right? For, what point favors? ALL. Now let's see. So 15 years of age, this is number one point. 15 years. Mm -hmm. Number two, he has a pancytopenia. Pancy. I will put it. Anemia means low HB. Recurrent chest infections, probably lay WBC. Thrombocytopenia means low platelet count. So, patient of 15 years presented with pancytopenia, right? What mm. the term is pancytopenia. Why? Because all three low, na? when there is all three low pancytopenia, when two low, it will be called as a mycytopenia. Am I right or wrong? Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Right? So, this is pancytopenia. Let's go a little further. She was treated for the same. She treated. Symptoms were regressed. She was again brought with the same features and history of meningitis. So, 15 mm. years pancytopenia three things meningitis ALL CNS. meningitis common in ALL mm. exactly. CNS now meningitis. let's see now let me ask now let me tell you why not AML that is also important so usually AML is not seen in 15 years of age usually yes, usually adults in adults Com common is pediatric malignancies ALL so again here the importance of age we usually missed right we never see age Right, while solving the MCQ, you must see the age. Right, for autoimmune, you must see the female or male. It's important. Autoimmune, nine out of ten autoimmune occurs in female only. So you must remember. Right, this is all high yield point I'm giving you. Right, so this is second. Third thing is pancytopenia can be present. Yes, right. Very extremely rare. There is a meninges involved. No meningeal involvement. Never ever. I have so far in 20 years of practice, I have not seen patient AML with meningitis. Not. But ALL, lots of patients with meningitis. And to prevent the meningitis or CNS relapse or CNS disease in ALL, we give one drug. Anybody name know the name of the drug? We give one drug, right, which prevents the CNS manifestation in ALL patient. Anyone knows? Any guess? Methotrexate. 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 Exam question. DHA had MOH. Methotrexate. So, methotrexate is a drug of choice which is given in ALL as a profile axis, CNS profile axis we give to the patient. Right? Why not aplastic anemia? Aplastic anemia is a disease of 20 to 40 years. Number one. This is 15 years. Female. Right? Female is there but no 20 to 40 years. Pancytopenia can be present. They have no meningeal involvement, no meningeal involvement, and no meningitis. And CML, again, CML patient usually present with high WBC count. They are asymptomatic. Chronic leukemia, na? we've seen it. Usually increased WBC, right? Have, yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, right? yes. Increased WBC count. Usually increased platelet count with mild anemia. This is classical, right? But there is a count is increased usually. They are asymptomatic. Here, infection, 
प्लस ब्लीडिंग प्लस मैनेज दैट इज एवरीथिंग स्प्लिनोमेगाल इज अ स्ट्राइकिंग फीचर स्प्लिनोमेगाल इज अ स्ट्राइकिंग फीचर देर इज नो मैंशन बी सी आर एबल नो फिला डेल्फिया क्रोमोजोम नो फिला डेल्फिया क्रोमोजोम पी एच पॉजिटिव क्रोमोजोम देर इज नो मैनेज दैट इज इन सी एम एल और ए एम एल इट इज नॉट अलोइड इन्वॉल्वमेंट सो ए एम एल सी एम एल इज गॉन यस और नो यस और नो टेल मी एटलीस्ट यस और नो Yes, sir. Yes. Right. So this is how you have to differentiate in general. I mean, it's it's look easy to me because I am dealing with for years and years. But just I want to give you the concept when you are doing all four options, right? For any questions, if your answer is correct, then but you have to correlate why it is not AML, why it is not a plastic anemia, why it is not CML. This is real learning. This chart is a real learning. Our job is okay. Otherwise, I can finish fifty question in one hour. Fifty question. Answer is A L L. Okay, go ahead. Third question. One minute. Go ahead. You won't gather anything. Never ever you develop concept. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes, yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any question? Any question? Anyone has no. any questions? Wonderful. So this is answer is AML meningitis. Always keep in mind it is not very uncommon. It is very very common in our practice in pediatric hematology, right? So this is very important questions. Now again brainstorming questions for you guys. So let's me discuss with this. It is all different. First we seen leukemia in detail ALL. Now this is little change, right? So switch your gear from leukemia. Come out of leukemia now. This is tips I am giving you. 23 year old woman comes to emergency department with increased menstrual bleeding gum bleeding when she brushes her teeth and patches on the physical examination physical examination is otherwise normal her blood workup shows hb12 total count is 7000 platelet is 17000 her liver function renal function viral serology let me clarify hiv hbs ag hcv that is cumulatively called as a viral serology HIV virus, hepatitis B and C virus, all negative, right? ANA, anti-nuclear antibody is normal or negative. What is the most appropriate next step in the therapy? So they are asking the therapy. I did not tell you one this master mm -hmm. key. Anyone who is going to go for the exam or learning or resident in any MCQ, any MCQ, until and unless you know the three things, you will not be a master of that subject. One thing you must know the diagnosis. or differential diagnosis this is your job if you cultivate this practice you are master of mcq second thing is investigation again to this is how you have to think now onwards what is the initial investigation what is the best investigation treatment what is initial treatment what is a confirmatory or best treatment this things if you develop this concept from today you will be a master believe me you will be a master we are just mugging up the things we don't need to mug up we need to understand we god has given an excellent brain right you need to think so now they what they ask in the exam either they ask in any exam in middle east either they ask you the diagnosis either they ask you the investigation either they ask you the treatment so they are here directly as the therapy or treatment right so tell me how can you do the good treatment without knowing the diagnosis can you able to do yes or no if you no, don't sir. know the diagnosis can you able to treat no. the patient no forget about hematology you don't know chest pain what is the diagnosis if the diagnosis chain treatment if i can tell you chest pain eventually turn it to be gerd gastroesophageal reflux disease treatment is different if i can tell you chest pain converted to pulmonary embolism eventually treatment is different it converted to acute coronary syndrome treatment is different it is eventually turned to acute pancreatitis with epigastric pain and chest pain total treatment different am i right or wrong yes or no tell me at least yes or no yes yes right so here first of all you need to make a diagnosis they are asking treatment so think over it this mcq and tell me the diagnosis or differential diagnosis or possible diagnosis then we can jump on the investigation and treatment So think yes, over sir. it. I give you fifteen thirty seconds overall. Sir, it's ITP. Okay, it's ITP or likely ITP. Possible. Let's mm -hmm. see. Let's see what are the experts are saying. 
सो आई आई रिस्पेक्ट योर आंसर सो आई टी पी और पॉसिबल आई टी पी फाइन एनी अदर थिंग्स एनी अदर डायग्नोसिस इन द माइंड ऑफ एनी बडी डॉक्टर प्रिया एनी एनी वॉट्स योर डायग्नोसिस डॉक्टर ग्रेस डॉक्टर जावेद डॉक्टर माउली एनी एनी कॉमेंट ऑन दिस इफ दिस क्वेश्चन कम्स इन योर एग्जाम इन डी एच ए हाउ यू कॉन आर रिस्पॉन्ड टू दिस ओके फाइन सो नाउ लेट मी आस्क यू डॉक्टर जावेद गिव मी द पॉइंट गिव मी द पॉइंट विच फेवर आई टी पी दिस Okay, and it's so a, young 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 age twenty three, also uh, female. Female low platelet count. Low platelet count. No splenomegaly. No splenomegaly. No splenomegaly. What else? And history of bleeding. PTC and gum bleeding. Sorry. Okay. So, so low PTC platelet. PTC and gum right, bleeding so low, is there. Right. So it's a manifest in a low platelet is gum bleeding. Hematuria, gum bleeding, right? Or ecchymosis, petechi. This is all manifestation of eventually of low platelet, right? Because of low platelet, they they prone to bleed, right? Okay, fine. What else point favoring this? Viral serology negative, sir. ANA is normal, sir. So everything is normal. Na? There is nothing abnormal. So except platelet low. Would you Everything see anything normal. abnormal in this patient? No. You read it once again. You read it all the scenario. So, do you think, except I obviously, I mean, because of low platelet, he has a some bleeding, ecchymosis, petechi, blah blah, right? So, because of low platelet and bleeding, do you think anything abnormal in this patient? No. No. So write down. Write down in a big letters. Mm -hmm. Diagnosis of ITP is. Only low plate one one line. If I want to tell you, being expert in metrologist, how I define ITP low platelet, everything is normal. This is definition. Now somebody is thinking, sir, what is included in everything? Isn't it? <laughs> yes or no? Yes, sir. Let me tell you, everything is a very long list here. Everything, every, list of the everything. In CBC, hemoglobin, white cell, platelet, three thing. Hemoglobin, everything normal. I'm, I'm now writing the list of normal. What things can be normal in ITP? Hemoglobin normal. Whatever I'm writing, it's all normal, huh? Total count normal. No lymphadenopathy. No lymph node palpable. No hepatomegaly. No splenomegaly. HIV, HBSAG. Is or viral serology is normal. ANA is normal, right? USG is normal. Renal function is normal. Brain function is normal. All functions in the body or taste, whatever the taste you remember, all taste normal. Now tell me, is that clear? Yes, sir. Liver function normal. Nothing left. Whatever the taste name you know. Everything is normal. Then what's the problem? Only low platelet. Everything is normal. This is definition from my side. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Right. So this patient has everything normal. Hemoglobin normal. WBC normal. Patient liver functions normal. Kidney functions normal. Patients viral normal. ANA normal. Even I can add you ultrasound and chest X-ray here. Normal example, right? If this low platelet is with HIV, then it is not ITP. Then it is HIV primary induced thrombocytopenia. Mm -hmm. HIV induced thrombocytopenia. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. HIV. If yes. HIV and low platelet, it is not ITP. It is. HIV. If ANA positive, here mm. they are saying ANA normal. But if ANA positive and low platelet count, then it is autoimmune disease yes. or mixed connective tissue disorder. If it is a hepatitis B virus, 
positive and low platelet it is because of hepatitis not itp is that clear yes or no at least tell me yes or no yes, yes sir if there is a huge splenomegaly and low platelet count it is not itp look at the causes of splenomegaly <laughs> could be a liver disease could be a portal hypertension could be a lymphoma could be a cml <laughs> could be a cll it could be a malarial spleen it could be a tropical spleen it could be a kala azar i can give you 10 differential diagnosis but it is not itp <laughs> so what is the final conclusion of itp only low platelet everything is normal isn't it a good definition or simple definition in other fancy word what we call itp is a diagnosis of exclusion is that clear this is book word mm -hmm. When you read the chapters yes, of ITP in any book, right? First line is that diagnostic criteria of ITP. First line is this in all book. I read it all 10 hundreds of books so far. <laughs> ITP is a diagnosis of exclusion. That is the diagnosis. <laughs> so if you don't get anything, no problem in liver, lung, bone, liver, spleen, even bone marrow. If you do the bone marrow, it's normal. That is ITP. <laughs> I mean, you get increased little mega karyocyte, right? Mm -hmm. But they are okay, increase max. So another fancy definition of ITP is low platelet, right? Or peripheral destruction, peripheral destruction with increased number of max or mega karyocytes in bone marrow is equal to ITP. This is fancy definition in our medical term. Is that clear to everyone? Yes or no? Please tell me at least yes or no. Yes, sir. So now, never ever miss. So whenever you are thinking of ITP, look at mm. the other parameter. If you find something abnormal, then forget about ITP. <laughs> when you don't get anything apart from, I, I mean, only low platelet, think first differential is ITP. Because you try to find yes. out liver sonography, spleen sonography, ultrasound, chest x-ray, CT scan, PET CT scan, bone marrow, everything you did it all, viral serology, blood culture, this culture, that culture. Nothing positive. It's ITP. Is that clear? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, doctor. Yes, now, doctor, tell me, doctor Mauli. Now, now we come to the conclusion that this is a likely ITP. I give you a nice lecture to you, everyone. What is the therapy? Or what yes, you sir. want to do? Now, what you want to do from this? Are you going to do the bone marrow for this patient? Are you going to give the intravenous immunoglobulin? Are you going to give prednisone? Are you going to do the antiplatelet antibody? Or you transmit the patient because platelets are low, patient is bleeding, blah, blah, blah. So what you want to do for this patient now? Prednisolone. So it's prednisolone. For ITP, we give oral corticosteroid. Okay, so for so, ITP, so, we give oral corticosteroid. Now. So you, uh, no, I'm just trying to understand from you. We'll discuss definitely. I will give you all logic. Okay. I will give you all plus point and negative point. I will give you. So you will be convinced, right? Yeah. So so your answer, yes. I keep it as a steroid. Anyone else? Because this patient is bleeding. How do you can confirm mm -hmm. the ITP without doing the bone marrow? You can give another answers as well. This is Dr. Mowley's answer. Bye. Anybody wants to Bye. have different answers? Yes, but checking anti anti yes, yes, Nirja. So how, how so you in your, how you confirm in your medical college? She is a she is a resident of uh, hematopathologist, <laughs> Nirja. Uh, so now this case comes to you. They have sent uh, the CBC to you. CBC you uh, have read. You have the all history of uh, the patient. Now what you advise to the patients? Uh, uh, it's difficult to do antiplatelet antibodies there, sir, in the medical side, <laughs> medical college setting. You do or no? So, you do or CMC? You are in CMC, well, Lord? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> it's no normal in medical are... college. Fair journey. enough. So, so, are you, so in what that you cases, do? We just start... If I can tell you, being a pathologist, what test you run for the ITP? Mm -hmm. You are suspecting somebody as ITP. So, what mm -hmm. test you confirm? Mm -hmm. Or you don't confirm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, sir. What about bone marrow aspiration? Bone marrow aspiration. 
you tell me while write down whatever you tell me forms of so so you want to do bone marrow aspiration uh, okay aspiration. now next ne no problem we'll go slowly uh, doctor one minute right just you will never forget this discussion right so bone marrow aspiration you do it what you are looking for in bone marrow mm. you need to know no before doing bone marrow when i'm doing ecg for some chest pain i'm looking only one uh. thing i look my eyes are trained for st elevation uh, yes. i look for st elevation once the ecg is out immediately i'll see where is the st elevation you understand mm. so what say okay. say for example you did a bone marrow biopsy what is the abnormality in bone marrow biopsy yes, in itp in that case mega karyocytic hyperplasia so increase mega karyocyte mm, basically like mega right okay fine so you you did bone high. marrow you you But increase the mega karyocyte what what is your mm. next step now tell me you did for the bone marrow for this patient okay fine i'm mm. agree your final result comes bone marrow aspirin result comes right it comes as increase max oh, now what will you do mm -mm. now what if hy hypolobated forms are there then we will consider as a itp sir so do you see any time hypolobated do you know that yes or no how many hypolobated yes, mega karyocyte you seen in itp uh if it is more than 3 in hyper field so so being a pathologist your job is to read bone marrow examination in itp or suspected itp and what is the characteristic of mega karyocyte tell me tomorrow directly call me never ever hypolobated okay, you go and read it if there is a hyper segmented or hypolobated okay, for your knowledge if this is mega karyocyte just for your knowledge this is a platelet right so there is like neutrophil there is this mm. is a platelet just general understanding this is normal platelet if it is a hypolobated okay. then it is a mds diagnosis is chain myelodysplastic syndrome myelodysplastic syndrome mm. where you see the hypolobated pelger ua abnormality right blah blah you seen hyper or hypolobated it is not seen in itp so you go and specifically read because this is your main job being a pathologist to mm -hmm. read the bone marrow aspirate it is primarily your job we depend on you once you give yes, me sir. then i'll proceed for the treatment so your homework specifically not for others for you because you are seeing okay, the bone marrow under microscope every day mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. need to report mm -hmm. and on your report hematologist will act and react right so i don't want yes, you to do some mistake so you go and read okay. especially low platelet and bone marrow examination that's it okay fine any clinician okay. here can tell me what is what is the next therapy here what is the next therapy here dr mauli told it is a prednisolone i heard so this is dr mauli's answer is here dr mauli's answer is prednisone what's anybody else answer she could be right she could be wrong so don't judge and bias their answer you give your answer because dr mauli will not be helping you in exam you are the one who will post a b c d so you post your a b c d Likon, I want to listen from you. Likon, you are quiet for quite some time. Likon, open up. Yes, Likon. I am in OPD. Sorry, sir. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yes, sir. Continue yes, OPD. Yes, listen sir, later yes. on. Carry on your OPD. Yes, sir. Fair enough. Yes, Ravi. Any anything? So why? Yes, Ravi. Are you still in OPD or you are not in OPD? No sir, I think your prednisone is right because bone marrow biopsy is not indicated in all of right. the so, cases. Right, right. So now you are right. So answer here is a prednisone, right? So you are absolutely mm -hmm. right, Doctor Mauli. Prednisone is the answer. Now let me ask you, Doctor Mauli, when you will use the intravenous immunoglobulin in a case of ITP? This is another question in exam. Change the question mm -hmm. here. What is the question? Patient diagnosed as ITP, right? patient is a diagnosis hmm. what is the indication of using iv immunoglobulin in itp patient then what's the answer there must be some indication no? there must be some indication sir can i tell this answer sorry so when the bleeding is more critical and uh, maybe unresponsive to corticosteroid then we will give the ivig Sorry, 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 sorry. One minute, I want to understand. Sorry. Less than ten thousand platelets, I guess. 
One minute, one minute. Let me first finish, Dr. Mauli. Yes, tell me, what are the indications of IVIG? So I think uh, if we give prednisolone in a patient and he, he or she is not responding to that and the uh, bleeding is still critical, then we can give IVIG. No, so say for example, patient is not critical. Patient is absolutely stable, right? Okay. Patient is absolutely stable, right? Yeah. And uh, patient patient is responding to this uh, steroid, then corticosteroid, then you use or not use? If patient is responding to steroids, so, so what my question is, what are the absolute indication of using intravenous immunoglobulin? That is the specific question. Now tell me. Oh. So, so these are the things mainly when there is a life-threatening bleeding. I remember two B. One B is for brain bleeding. Brain bleeding because of low platelet. Another B is a bowel bleeding. These are the two life-threatening bleeding where you use the IVIG, number one. And when you are using the bridging treatment, means you want steroid takes some time, right? Steroid may take some time to act, right? So in that case, especially when less than 10,000 platelets are there, you can give IVIG, you can give, start steroid because steroid may take two days, three days to act. This effect okay. will usually start within 24 hours immediately or as fast as possible, right? So in this two case, right? So neither this patient, have you seen here intracranial hemorrhage is there? Can you find out in history? Yes or no? No. 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 Can yes. you find out bowel bleeding in this scenario? No. No. Can you see less than 10,000 platelet? No. no it's 17,000. No. So neither of this condition is there. So, intravenous immunoglobulin is not required in this patient at least. Bone marrow biopsy is a diagnosis of exclusion. If you give steroid mm. and if steroid does not respond, then you do the bone marrow. Right? Because you probably okay. dealing with acute leukemia or you dealing with the multiple myeloma, you dealing with the myelodysplastic syndrome, you dealing with some kind of bad bone marrow disorder, then you do. But in classical case of ITP, you don't usually need it to do bone marrow, especially more than 10,000 patient. If patient is stable, if there is a no life-threatening bleeding, you are not suspecting leukemia, in that case, you don't need it. How do you differentiate? In leukemia, you also have low platelet count. Low platelet patient present with leukemia. So why not leukemia, Dr. Mauli? If I can, if I can ask you, what points not favoring the leukemia? Let me ask you in the other way. If you suspect this patient as a leukemia, suspected leukemia, then what it could be there in the leukemia patient? Tell me. If it is leukemia, if you are thinking that this patient is a leukemia, sir, not ITP, because in leukemia also there is a low platelet. Why not it is leukemia? Anyone? Nirja? Sir, any WBC hemoglobin is normal here. Oh, yes. In leukemia, Great. it will be uh, yeah, pancytopenia. So Great, wonderful. And so examining basically, findings also. Yeah, so, so if it is leukemia, if it is leukemia, right? So mm -hmm. platelet count is low, that is fine. WBC is usually low, but it could be a leukocytosis as well. Got it, right? Usually okay. low, but there could be a leukocyte. They present with 50,000 platelet as well, uh, WBC count in acute myeloid leukemia, right? Or yes, they sir. present with the pancytopenia. So low w platelet, usually low WBC or high WBC. Very clear. Keep in mind. And hemoglobin is usually low. It's never high. Forget about high. Yes. This is one thing. So, this is not favoring. WBC is absolutely normal. Here normal, right? 7,000. So, I'm not suspecting. Hemoglobin is normal. Close to normal. Not suspecting. Biggest thing is no blast. Because when you want to yes. diagnose acute leukemia, there must be more than 20% blast. We've seen already long story. Right? Mm. So, there is no blast yes, in peripheral smear. There is no splenomegaly. There is nothing. Absolutely fine. Right? Yes, sir. Is that clear? Yes or no? And there is never yes, examination. Sir. Examination is normal. Never examination is normal. Why? Because if it is leukemia, there must be a paler because of low hemoglobin. Right? There must be some kind of glum yes, bleeding, sir. urine bleeding. Right? This is because of platelet. 
right? And uh, the infection, the current infection in acute leukemia, usually fever, blah, 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 pneumonia, something, right? Nothing is abnormal here, right? So this is a classical case of ITP and first line treatment of ITP is steroid. Write down in bold letter, first line treatment is a steroid. Your homework, if steroid fails, what are the other treatment options? That is your homework. I can give lecture one hour on ITP only, but I'm just restricting myself due to the exam point of view. I'm going just, I don't want to make you hematologist. Now I want to give you the concept that, okay, how you going to treat? So this is one step you need to know. Anybody knows the answer? If you had given the steroid for two or three months, full course of steroid, patient does not respond at all. After two months of treatment, platelet count is still 17,000, 20,000, 30,000. It is not come into the normal range. That is 140 to 450. This is normal range. Am I right or wrong? 150,000 to 450 or 8 lakhs, 4 lakhs. This is normal, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? So, this is not get into yes, the sir. normal range. So, so what could be the other treatment options are there? That is your hope. So, we give rituximab, no? Second line as second line. So, are you asking me or yes. telling me? <laughs> What's the different thing? The second line is rituximab. Okay. So, why you want I'm... to give... No, it's fine. I mean, this is all... That is what the learning platform... You never get better than this learning platform where all questions has been discussed. Right? Because we never discuss in clinic like this only. We just try treating, treating, treating. But we don't know the logic. So, why you want to give the rituximab? How the rituximab will help in this patient? Anyone? Anyone, Nirja, you know? Mm. Yes, no problem. So this know. is still a homework. Still the homework. You go and read it. Still the homework. Still the homework. Right? So this is concluding my talk. Right? This is Excellent chart. I got it for you. Excellent chart. Right? So, treatment of ITP. First of all, if patient is no bleeding, most important is bleeding than platelet number. Huh? Let me tell you. So, if patient's platelet count, ITP, I have two ITP patients in my OPD today. Example, one ITP patient platelet count 30,000 and he is bleeding and one patient in my second patient in my OPD ITP with platelet count of 10,000 in absolutely fine and no bleeding, I will treat this patient first. Are you getting me yes or no? Are you getting me yes or no? Yes. Bleeding is extremely important than the numbers. Forget about the number. Number are just the numbers. Most important thing is the bleeding history. So, when patient is not bleeding and platelet count are more than... This is international guideline. No? All it is not from me. It is all from the international book. Right? But to make you easy, I did a lot of hard work to just create this all slide for make your job easy. So, no bleeding and more than 30,000, no treatment. Right? Okay. Mild, my, let yes, me sir. finish. Mild bleeding, platelet count less than 30,000. So, our case... Deserve this. Our patient has a bleeding, right? Gum bleeding, menstrual bleeding, blah, blah. And platelet 17,000. Am I right? Yes or no? Our scenario. Yes, sir. Right? So, here, treat, treatment is steroid. So, this is the answer. Severe bleeding. To be, bo I told, bowel and brain. BB. Bowel, brain. This is how I remember. So, when there is a severe bleeding in bowel or brain, or platelet count is less than 10,000, IVIG is the indication. Is that clear, Dr. Mauli? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? So, that is the thing. And recurrent episode or treatment fails or steroid dependent, oldest for 50 years or plus, people are doing the splenectomy. This is, but it is operation. Splenectomy is operation. So now the newer treatment option, 
as told me by Dr. Mauli, rituximab is one of the treatment, right? So splenectomy or steroid not effective. Usually people are advising for splenectomy because still it is the highest cure rate. So steroid is 70 to 80 percent people get into the remission. If they fail, they go for the splenectomy. If you advise for the patient for the splenectomy, but if they refuse for splenectomy, then these are the options, treatment option. One is romiplostin. It is a thrombopoietin analog or thrombopoietin agonist, right? So you give this. Yes, this is L thrombopag. It's oral, right? Romiplostin, this rituximab, and all immunosuppressing ISA agent, azathioprine, cyclosporine, mycophenolate, right? These all are the immunosuppressant. So basically, ITP. Earlier name was what? ITP. Idiopathy. Yes, sir. But now this is not the name in book. Now it is immune mediated. Immune mediated. Got it? Autoimmune yes. disease. Commonly seen in female. So this some kind of antibody which kills the platelet. Right? Sir, B, B cell, right? Yes, sir. sir Sorry. I got it. Uh, the rituximab works like as an antibody which binds with the B cell uh, surface of the B cell because in ITP B cell uh, destroy the platelet. So when rituximab True. bind with the B cell, it uh, helps to uh, decrease the uh, attack of the platelet. Absolutely right. It's anti CD twenty antibody. Yeah. Right. Yes, whenever sir. there is a come another one another tips from me. Whenever MAB comes in the last MAB. It is monoclonal antibody, that is MAB, monoclonal antibody. Is that clear, yes or no? Yes, sir. Right, so these all are the treatment option. And last but not the least, the tips. ITP is a diagnosis of exclusion. Yes, I told you why definition of ITP is low platelet plus everything is normal. Is that clear? Yes, sir. ITP has no organomegaly, no hepatomegaly. Only low platelet in CBC, peripheral destruction with large platelet increased mega karyocytes in the bone marrow. If you do the bone marrow examination or biopsy. First line treatment is steroid. And this is the dose we give usually to the patient. 1 milligram per kilogram. So 60 mil kg, 60 milligram. 70 kg, 70 milligram. 80 kg, 80 milligram. 1 milligram per kilogram per day. 70% of the patients achieve remission. That means 30% patient will not achieve the remission. Means they will, the platelet count is not increased. And if they not increase, these are the another treatment options, including romiplostim, l thrombopack, rituximab, azathioprine, cyclosporine, mycophenolate, right? And more other long list of immunosuppressant drugs. This is how we treat clinically being a metrologist in our OPD, right? And IPD as well. So... That's all. I think I stop it here. I'm speaking for almost close to one hour and 30 minutes close to that. We have few more topics like one Willebrand factor, multiple myeloma, iron and B12 deficiency, CML and newer oral anticoagulant drug that will I will cover in next lectures, probably in a day or two. I will uh, coordinate with each and everybody and I'll try to get in touch with you. So those who don't want to miss, just keep in touch with me. And those who are already in our coaching, they will 100% get notification. But those who are not in coaching, like Dr. Nirja, she can contact me. So I will update you with the next lecture if you guys like this lecture. So before I stop, just spare one or two minutes and give me the feedback a little bit. Those who are joining first time, how did you enjoy? So you start with the Nirja. How did you enjoy this class? And what's the new learning for you? Yes, please. Dr. Niraja, are you there in the class? Yes, Dr. Mauli, how was your experience? Quick. So it was good. Though it's a kind of uh, lots of details and uh, the oncologist part and the most, I think some parts were deep that I was not... Uh, read before i have not read before but, but so on informative yeah. also thank you sir yeah but 
वंडरफुल थैंक यू फॉर योर फीडबैक बट आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू दिस ऑल विल कम इन एग्जाम डॉक्टर स्पेशली डी एच ए हाद एम ओ एच सो ऑनेस्टली स्पीकिंग आई डिड नॉट टच वेरी डिटेल पार्ट बट दिस इज वेरी बेसिक एंड वेरी वेरी कॉमन एंड दे आस दिस कॉमन क्वेश्चन एज वेल राइट सो इट इज प्रॉब्लेबली इट्स पॉसिबल दैट यू मे नॉट गो इन डिटेल ऑफ एम जीरो टू एम सेवन आई अंडरस्टैंड ऑब्वियसली इट्स नॉट नन ऑफ योर जॉब बींग जनरल प्रैक्टिसनर और इमरजेंसी फिजिशियन बट बट this is the questions they ask usual in the exam so anyway but yes, thank you very much for your kind attention and interaction yes ravi how was your experience thank you so much like a good uh, 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 eye opener or something like that. thank you very yeah. much thank you yes dr javed how was your learning today sir it is good sir the, it, it's basically gave me the Road map, how to go about it. I, I went through this topic uh, yesterday. I knew that it was very class today. I went through the topic, but now I I am more clear of where to go with this this information. Wonderful, excellent, wonderful. Thank you. Yes, Lee Kwan, Doctor Madan Gupta. How was your experience? Thank you, sir. It was very informative. Actually, I read this topic yesterday, but today is very much clear, sir. A L L M L. and everything yeah you are Thank very you, brilliant guy <laughs> nice sir <laughs> great i need your lecture every day sir i already told you that day <laughs> every day sir because it's very much clear sir thing to wonderful. say wonderful i will be in more in action and picture don't worry yes priya yes sir it was yes. very informative excellent class wonderful so finish it all hematology by next lecture so we can discuss more right yes sir wonderful dr madan gupta any comment lastly yes yes somebody raise the hand ask me the questions if you have any question yes dr madan gupta you can speak fine i think it's difficult for her, him just probably yes nirja yes nirja no question sir ah uh, no no question sir it's very sorry your voice is not coming fine so i think we'll stop here and thank you very much all for joining probably she has some mic issues so thank you very much all doctor uh, for joining with me so just stay tuned stay connected for the next lecture meanwhile enjoy your evening thank you very much and good night thank you sir thank you take care